Let's bring in Chris Sims, Pro Football Talk Live, co-host, NBC Sunday Night Football Analyst. Did you ever get fined for a uniform violation, Chris? Yeah, I did. Um, I'm not showing too, not showing enough black on the socks, <laughs> or no, no, showing too much black on the socks for you know the Tampa Bay Buccaneers. Of course, you know, like you know, sometimes you want it. It's supposed to be the the right proportion of white and black. So I like the way all the black looked and it would make it, you know, predominantly black, but you know, you had to try to trick the uniform guy to a degree to make that happen. But how and, are you told that you're in violation? Well, like first off, they're going to check you in warmups and then they're going to come through the locker room after warmups, maybe 10 to 15 minutes before you go out there to the game and they're going to walk around and go, hey, number two, so you don't have enough white in your socks. Hey, number 32, you know, tuck your jersey in. Hey, blah, 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 your cleats are in violation. And they let you know. But what guys do to try to skirt that is if you go, well, what I did, I would go out to warmups very proper. And then I'd start the game and I'd go, ah, they didn't warn me, so they can't <laughs> find me yet. And now I got my socks changed and I looked a little different. But even doing that at halftime, they were going to come tell you again. They were going to get you. But I don't know who I, I heard there to, to, to whoever it was. I don't know if it was Fritzy or whatever. Um, I, I do find the rule a little inconsistent at times. Like, like there's, I, I could find 70 guys that I watched on film this past week that had jerseys untucked. They weren't fine. But for some reason, C.D. Lamb was. And I don't, I don't understand that with the NFL at times. All right, let's start with Odell Beckham Jr. What team is the right fit? Not necessarily where he goes, but what, what is the best place for him to go? Well, that, it, that, it's a tough one. I mean, I, I think I look at it and, you know, of course you got the Saints, the Chiefs, the Patriots, the Packers, those four teams involved. They all have little different nuances as far as why I think they're best, all right? So this is a hard one for me to answer. Like, hey, the Chiefs, they certainly need them. It can't just be Tyree Kill and Kelsey, but their offense is struggling and Mahomes is struggling right now. I mean, plain and simple. I mean, he's struggling. You know, Green Bay, you know, they're, they're not the type of offense where – it's like the most diverse passing offense in the world. It's Devontae Adams, Devontae Adams, Devontae Adams, and not necessarily always the scheme that leads them there. So I don't know. Can they find a way to, like, you know, infuse Odell Beckham Jr. into that offense? I think they could. I'd like to see that. I do think they need another guy if they want to win the Super Bowl. Um, but as far as just, like, maybe – you know, you know, what do I want to say? Jump starting your career again and going to places where you know it's a true, like, proven fact that they can get you the ball. That's where I go to the Saints and the Patriots. Yeah, but now, he doesn't not... trust Trevor Simeon. Well, that's I, and that's where that's where that's why it's like hard for me to give one here, and I, that's why I want to give a little context. You're right. The Trevor Simeon thing is not that appealing. But Sean Payton, knowing how to get the ball to a guy all the time, is very appealing. And he, I would argue maybe he's the best in football at doing it. Maybe, you know, even before Michael Thomas, they could feature guys that way. And here's the other reason I would just say the Saints, too, because there could be a little bit of a long play there as well. You know, I think the Michael Thomas uh, Saints relationship is over from everything I know, and I don't expect to see him back in uniform there ever again. And he could be that guy for that offense. And – I would think the Saints are going to be a major player for one of these quarterbacks that's on the market next year. So it could be good for the future. That's what I would argue. And that's the same thing with New England. They know how to get the guys the ball. They can orchestrate offense around that. And then you have a future there to build with, with Mac Jones and be the guy. So that that's my answer. I know I kind of copped out and didn't give you one place, but they all have some positives and they all have some negatives to me. And I think that's why he's probably taking a little time to try to figure this out. But there's a team that you've already – you mentioned before you even came on the air, I think you tweeted, and it's Buffalo. Yeah. Because yes. Buffalo, if, if Odell Beckham's big picture is being on a winning team, well, Buffalo probably has the best chance to go to the Super Bowl. Yeah, and I, and, and I, I, you put yeah, him opposite sorry. Stephon Diggs, you right. got Josh Allen, and right. you might have some magic there. I, just, I don't know if he wants to go to Buffalo. But if you want to go yeah. and win – that might be the place where you can go and extend your career, at least through the postseason, longer than any uh, other place. Agreed. He's got to be careful here. You know, hey, legacy's on the line. He's got a perception about him around the league. 
You know, there's certain some people that don't want anything to do with him. And, you know, again, he's he's been a guy that just hasn't got a lot of opportunities. He's athletically looks still really good. But uh, the analogy I use all the time is like, you know, if Golden State didn't throw the ball to Steph Curry until the fourth quarter, I'm sorry, he's not going to be the same Steph Curry. He's not just going to knock down threes all over the place. And Odell Beckham Jr. the last two years has gone through such long periods of time where he's open a lot. Wait, and the you're, ball blaming, come his you're way. blaming the Browns scheme. I definitely, to a degree, the scheme and Baker Mayfield did, would be the two things. I don't know what there was there. There's something there, but I've broken this down on my unbuttoned podcast a bunch where I've shown a long list of plays to go, wait, I know this play. I know how you're supposed to read it. And Odell's wide open. And I don't understand why the ball didn't go there. So, you know, there's a little of everything there that happened in Cleveland. And Cleveland's pass game is, to me, without the run game being success successful, is a little underwhelming. But, like, getting back to the Bills, you know, the only reason I didn't say them, that's the one that makes the most sense to me. But I just haven't heard any rumors or anything yeah. substantial to think it's going there. But you hit it exactly right. You know, their defense is Super Bowl-ish. They have no run game. And right now it's just – Josh Allen and Stephon Diggs make magic for us every week. And they do need another guy, in my opinion, if they think they're going to march through the AFC playoffs and get to the Super Bowl. And that's that would be the one place if I was talking to Odell Beckham Jr. and I was talking to teams in the leagues, I'd go, get that done. That one seems to make the most sense. We had Mike Tannenbaum on yesterday, former uh, front office executive. And right. I asked him about Baker Mayfield. Would you sign him up long term? And he said no. He said right now he's the – third best quarterback in his own division and he's going to cost you too much and he's maybe the sixth seventh best quarterback in the AFC which I don't even know if he's that even though he is having a good year if you look at his numbers he's having a good year in fairness right. to him but you know you can't get that sweet spot of 38 or 28 to 30 million dollars which maybe you want him there but then I don't want to pay him 40 to 45 million uh, like th that to me is exactly it. I mean, I, I would sign up Odell Beckham Jr. I mean, Odell Beckham Jr., uh, Baker Mayfield long term, but it's going to have to be on a term that makes sense for the Cleveland Browns. I think that's what I would do. You know, again, like, I, I, you know, Baker's good. But I don't it never think happens that way, Chris. Where a I, well, the, the, the NFL then the, a lot of people are going to have to start dealing with Carson Wentz and Jared Goff situations if they're going to continue down this. Yeah, and then they're going to have to hear guys like me tell them how stupid they are for doing it. You know, so that's where like they're not quarterback dependent. Their team is built around the run game. He's not one of the ten best quarterbacks in football. He's still very good, but I don't look at him as top 10 quarterback we know it's kind of been up and down to a degree so from that standpoint yes you know I would sign him up but I wouldn't give him 38 or 40 million dollars a year absolutely not and the other thing I say because I've had people ask me this too I want to just go you know like what if you offered him 30 million or 28 million which is pretty good you know money of course we know in the real world and football quarterback money that's kind of average all right but at the same time, would I've even I've had these conversations with some people around the NFL. I just want to go, well, who do you think's going to be like knocking down the door going, we got to get Baker Mayfield to our team and we're going to give them 40 something million dollars because it's going to change our team. No, I don't think that's the, you know, the perception or the reality around that situation. He's not Aaron Rodgers or Josh Allen or Russell Wilson or one of those guys or uh, so that's where. You know, that would be my my stance on that. Uh, halfway point of the season, your MVP is? Well, it's not going to look good like after last week. I, I, I Like before the week started last week, I said Matthew Stafford. Uh, Matthew Stafford would be the guy I would pick. I mean, you know, first off, I think the success there has happened what, way quicker than we anticipated. He's changed their football team, you know. They got some injuries at the running back position. They're not as special that way. And now we don't have to go like, whoa, if they can't run and don't have bootlegs, what are they going to do in the, this week? How are they going to manage the game? I hope the defense can be phenomenal. So to me, he's changed the perception of them throughout the whole league, let alone the NFC. And I know it's bad timing because he doesn't look great. Uh, but I, you know, to me, I would go there. And of course, I'm a little, I guess, biased because everybody's crapped on him so long in Detroit. He's horrible. He's horrible. He's horrible. So now he must be great, I guess. That's that's where I just I want to fight back against that narrative. But of course, Kyler Murray, Lamar, 
Tom Brady. I think those are probably the other three guys I look there, like, you know, nipping at his heels. Chris Sims, Pro Football Talk Live co-host and a contributor to NBC Sunday Night Football. The taunting penalty the other night with Tony Correnti, the, uh, the official, you had a run-in with him when you were playing, which I found really interesting. Explain that to the audience. Sure. You know, first, I did not agree with that call. I don't think that's why that rule was put in place because of staring at the sideline from 30 yards away. Sorry, that's just not what it was there for. It's not the video the NFL showed us before the year to explain it. You know, that's not, it's not. They're, they're going, you know, outside the lines on that. But yes, I had a game and it was San Francisco 2005 and got hit really late, you know, after a play. I mean, like maybe as late as I ever was hit in my NFL career and nothing was called. And I kind of looked back at him, and I just, I, as I was running, I went, what the hell? That was a late hit. That's like all I said. Ran off the field. And now as I, you know, you come back on the next drive, it's commercial break, right? The referee usually gives you some warnings about, like, when he's going to blow the whistle and start the clock. So it happened once. I'm kind of sitting around, and Gruden's talking to my ear, and I'm looking at him, and the guys are talking to the huddle, and he just blows the whistle. And I turn around, and I'm like, oh, my gosh, all right. Hey, West right slot, 72Z, bingo, you split. All right, it goes on. We have a timeout or something like maybe a minute or two later, and the same thing happens. And it happened, I believe, three different times until I finally went up to him to the next commercial break, and I said, why aren't you giving me a warning? Can I get a warning before we come back from break here? That's kind of standard protocol. They kind of look at you and go, hey, get, get your guys ready. Call your play. I'm going to blow the whistle. That's kind of how it goes. Every team, every ref, every game, all year. And he looked at me and he said, are you going to apologize for what you said earlier? <laughs> and, I mean, Did the you? competitor in one of me wanted to be like, would you get the hell out of my face? And I'd like to like really say some four-letter words to you. But I didn't want to be ripped off by him for the rest of the game and not him call other penalties. So I went... I'm sorry about that. And then he said, okay, <laughs> I'll give you your warnings back. And I just, to me, that he's always bothered me. There's a lot of talk like that around him. You heard Brian Greasy, even during the telecast, say he had his run-ins with, you know, Tony Correnti. A lot of people have. Do you think me, he, he gets purposely, a little personal. Do you think he made contact on purpose Monday night? Cassius I, I, Marsh. It, I, I, it just, it appears that way. I mean, it appears that way. The whole thing is weird. You know, as I've argued on the show, like, I'm all for this rule. I've, I've been one that's defended it because I am a behind the, like, wait, these are role models. The kids watch this. And, like, the aspect of what we wanted out of the game was, like, the 40-yard run down the sidelines and the defender makes a tackle 40 yards down the field and he gets up and he stands over him. He's like, yeah, I tackled you. I know you almost got a touchdown, but I tackled you. <laughs> or, you know, the receiver who catches a three-yard route and now the DB tackles, he stands over him and puts his man junk in his face. Like, look, I dominated you for three yards. Oh, my gosh. That's got to go. Like that, I'm all for that. This is not what the rule's for. I mean, again, and you know, like I said on PFT with four, how do you know he wasn't looking at his mom in the second row and just going like, look at me, mom. I mean, to me, that was just like uh, unnecessary. And that's where common sense has been lost by the referees in the NFL, in my opinion. Yeah, but the NFL didn't take any action against Tony Correnti. And to me, well, no, of he course initiates, not. it's almost like he was trying to draw a charge. Like, come on. Right. And then he throws right. the flag as soon as contact is made that he initiated. Yes. You, yes. Can, you can throw the flag for taunting. I had no problem with that. But you right. throw it a couple of seconds earlier when the taunting actually happens. I had yes. a real problem with that. And you know what? He's not going to be disciplined by the NFL. They're going to be like, no, oh, of course let's not. just move on. Get into the weekend. Everybody will forget about this. Hey, right, that's right. Uh, the NFL's never made a mistake ever in the history of their wow. lives. They've never made a mistake. Wow. I know they can still yeah. come after you. They can come after yeah. your benefits. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you're right. They could. <laughs> hey, great to talk to you as always, Chris. Thank you. Have a great weekend. Thanks, man. Hey, tell those idiots I said hi. Hey, hey idiots. Chris says uh, hi. 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 Yes. Chris Sims, Pro Football Talk Live co-host. 